Hello YouTube, happy Friday. Hello YouTube, happy Friday. Facebook, I think you're at the party too. Hello everybody. Happy Friday, are you ready for the last new sketch in our series? I'm gonna find me on both platforms and another device, but say hello when you get here. Hey Lisa, hey Christina, yes, all right. Way to represent YouTube, how about Facebook? How are we doing on Facebook? You guys there? Say hello when you get in here. Make some likes or some thumbs up or things like that. That helps the video um, with the al algorithms. I love that word. There we go. Looks like we got Facebook represented too. Hey, Gian. Oh, Gian. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Hey, Fran. Okay, so since Gian's here, <laughs> we're going to start out. With <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Tony. Hey, Kathy. How are you today? Happy Friday, you guys. All right, so I'll give everybody another minute or two to get in here. I got some stuff, some stuff to show you. Tony says, got home just in time to find you. Yeah. Well, we've got a brand new shortcut card sketch. It's the um, number 12. We just had a series releasing 10, 11, and 12. You can find them on the Kitchen Table Stamper Craft Social. That's our group on Facebook. Uh, or you can find them at kitchentablestamper.com. I will be releasing this one in just a little while on the blog. Oh, wrong one. I'll also put it on the um, Facebook group with a picture of the sketch and an invitation for you to share your shortcut card sketch number 12 cards. Nancy says, found you. Jackie says, hello all. Hey, Marianne. Veronica says, good morning, Marissa and everyone. Happy Friday, everyone. Hi, Gian. Happy Friday to you, too. All right, we're getting our viewers here. I'm still having trouble finding myself on this um, other device on YouTube. Let me give that a, a quick try. I'm getting better at what to do, what, what buttons to push to find me. All right, so I want to show you guys this one while we're waiting for everybody to get in here. Gian said um, us this one. It was a little thank you card with a gift for my aunt and myself. And we both were just so touched by the thoughtfulness. And since we're using the same paper in our card sketch today, I just want to show everybody. This is a celebration designer series paper. It's called Flight and Airy. And look at the little birds. I love how Gian's card highlights the paper. It's the focal point and the background. And it really does show those birds. And then look at this, you guys. Look at how Gian did the inside. She fussy cut that little bird from the paper. Isn't that sweet? So while you're all getting in here, let me show you this one. Um, this is Flight and Airy. It's a 12 by 12 pack. It's two each, six double-sided designs with the birds on the A side and then watercolor or floral on the B side. Really awesome designer series paper pack. We're using that one. You got the paper sampler from the um, spring catalog. Then you have... Um, a sheet of each of these, a six by six sheet of each of these in your in your little bonus sample pack. But it's a really awesome item, still available for free with a $50 purchase. And so I just thought I'd, I would show you guys that product and Gian's awesome card because I really love how her card uses the birds from the Flight and Airy as the focal and then also the floral like we're using today as the background really great card thank you for sending that and for the gift it was really just so unexpected and and also and, and we are both uh, very touched by it it's been a hard couple of weeks i had um i missed you guys yesterday i had an extra commitment this week just something has come up um an extra project that i've been working on and i could not 
juggle all those balls. Like Rhonda Sarver tells, tells me, everybody's got so many spoons, right? Like you open the drawer and there's so many spoons in the drawer. And when you're out of spoons, you're out of spoons. And I was out of spoons this week. So I'm so sorry I didn't craft live with you guys. I missed you though. And I'm very excited to do short card sketch number 12 with you. All right, Deborah's here. Hey, Deborah. All right, Delilah, Belinda, hello. Christina says, loving this series. Oh, thank you, Christina. We do have um, uh, this series goes back uh, all the way to shortcut card sketch number one. And we've been doing them as part of our paper sampler. So 10, 11, and 12, we've finished our newest round of this series. But be sure to go back. Maybe I'll see if my assistant will add the links uh, to the series from card number one all the way through to shortcut card sketch number 12. I'm glad you like it, though, and I hope you use the sketches. Um, Christina, if you make cards using the sketches, please share in the craft social, okay? Um, Kitchen Table Stamper Craft Social is the Facebook group that's a fill, er, linked to the Facebook page. So if you go facebook.com slash groups slash Kitchen Table Stamper Craft Social, you'll see pinned to the top, we'll have 10, 11, and then I'll add 12. But then there's also a post for each of the other card sketches where you can where you can share or just pop them on there. The only rules in the craft social is please use your Stampin' Up! supplies when you share. Um, please do not link away from the craft social. It's our place to stay and play. Uh, we ask that you don't promote yourself or any other Stampin' Up! demonstrator or any other stamping company. And we ask that you do not post any buy, sell, trade, or in search of posts that's, um, there's awesome groups for that on Facebook, but our craft social is not the place. All right, so those are the simple rules, but we want to, we want you to come and join us and um, be a part of our community and share what you do with the sketches. <laughs> uh, Christina says, sure will, the links would be awesome. All right, I'm gonna message over to my assistant and have her link straight through the series, maybe on the last blog post and on the, on the thing, on the thing, how do you like that? That's a good one. <laughs> All right, let's see. Judy's here. Good afternoon. Hey, Melanie uh, from Ontario, California. Awesome. Martha says, oh, oh, the new latte sweet. Tell me about it, my friend. I ordered it. And but like I said just a minute ago, I'm, I'm juggling an extra commitment. It's really exciting. I am so glad for the opportunity. But because of it, I ordered my new latte suite, uh, but I didn't expedite it because I just have so much on my plate right now. It would just get here fast and then I'd be like guilty and, and tempted not to do my work. So I did order it. It should be here next week, I think. So <laughs> it is it is ooh la la, right? And if you don't know what Martha's talking about, this is the perfect time for me to remind you that it is celebration time and it is the most wonderful time of the year to join Stampin' Up! Demonstrators get to order the new online exclusive products starting yesterday or the day before. And we got to see them all, them all, like as in a lot of awesome stuff. So um, if you've ever thought about joining, this is my invitation to you right now personally don't just think about it. Check it out. There's no obligation. Nobody's going to come and take your kit away if you don't make your minimums or you decide that it's not for you. But if you've thought about it, now is a great time to join. You can join Stampin' Up! for $99. And that $99 will give you $125 worth of products plus the glass mat studio you guys have seen me use that before or an additional $30 of Stampin' Up products of your choice all right and um, generally when there's pre-order um, starter kits can include that pre-order in the starter kit so you should be able to shop your starter kit from and, and add the new uh, online pre-order items, all right? So, so check that out. And if you've got questions, you can email me, marissa at kitchentablestamper.com, or you can um, reach out and 
either call, text, my number is listed. I'm very happy to talk with you about any questions you have or text with you about any questions you have. So if you don't know about the latte suite, I'll show you next week, but you can order it and probably in your starter kit right now. I don't have to. <laughs> oh, hi Susan, I'm glad you're here. Hey Autumn. Julie says, oh, forgot to say hey. Hey Julie, I'm glad you said hello. I'm glad you're here. All right, let's see here. How's everybody doing this, this week? Are we having a good week? I've had such a busy week, I feel disconnected. Oh wait, excuse me. <coughs> Pardon me, I covered my microphone. Hopefully that didn't blast you guys. Um, let's see, this is our card today. This is our new sketch. I've showed you the awesome Flight and Airy designer series paper that we're using. That's a free celebration item. We are um, also going to use the um, Dragonfly punch today. Dragonfly's punch. And this was just added to the more to celebrate. Did you guys see this? So Stampin' Up! has um, offered 10 new items that you can choose from for celebration. With $50 order, you can choose Beside Me Cling Stamp Set or Botanical Layers Cling Stamp Set. You can get the Delightfully Eclectic Paper Pack. This one's a really big mega pack. Um, just kidding, Paper Pack. You can get Love This Notebook Kit or Robot Buddies Kit, Stripes and Splatters 3D Embossing Folder, or the Sweet Thoughts, Memories, and More Cards and Envelopes. I think free is the perfect price for these. They're gorgeous, but I always feel like they're a little bit overpriced, so I will be adding these to my next $50 order. And with a $100 order, you can add the Dragonfly Punch, and we're using it with some vellum to make really sweet little embellishments. Now, if you do this with some foil, like the um, copper, gold, brass, or you do it with the glitter, you get the best little embellishments and they never run out. So if you've got a wish list still, this is a great item. You can also get the two, new 2023 um, core color Stampin' Write marker. So this is the new design of um, the Stampin' Write. It's the new configuration and the colors that were added when we did the color refresh 2023. All right, so that's more to celebrate. We talked about our flight and airy paper. I think it's time to get stampin'. I'm gonna look at some comments and then we'll make our card. Anybody gonna um, have a crafty weekend? What are you guys doing? Unfortunately for me, it's gonna be some of my, um, I have to do some of my finances. We have to get our taxes in order. Ugh, it's always such a, I don't know. It's always such a, I dread this time of year. I think that that's what we're doing. So if you guys are crafting this weekend, I want to hear all about it. <laughs> Carol says, pretty card. Thank you. Hey, Bonnie. Bonnie's watching from her lunchtime at work. Oh, we'll keep it down then. <laughs> we'll keep it to a low roar. All right. So we're looking at our sketch number 12. And these sketches are to help you um, get started, give you confidence to cut the paper, but they're not set in stone. I say about me, crafty girls do what they want, right? So um, we're gonna shake it up just a little bit. You can see my card is, first of all, we've got this um, patchwork background. So we've made kind of a double layer between the B layer, which is three and three quarters by five, and um, the C layer, which is this one by three piece, we've added some patchwork. And then if you look at my card, my card is also flipped 180 degrees of the sketch. So the sketch is really just to get you inspired and get you to cut some paper, ink some stamps, but really do what you want with it. You can turn it this way, or instead of using a circle sentiment, you can use a banner, really just um, do ha have it your way, okay? So that's the idea. Bonnie says thumbs up and shared. Thank you so much. All right, that leads me to please share this video. When you share this video, YouTube, Facebook thinks that it's valuable content. When Facebook, YouTube thinks that it's valuable content, then they show people I don't already know my videos. They suggest me. And so it is a 
free way that you can really help the business when you share it and when you subscribe the um, YouTube algorithm thinks that we have valuable content and then YouTube will push my content out to more viewers so for free you get great content when you're subscribed and you help the business um, by teaching the YouTube algorithm so thank you guys for that sharing subscribing tagging friends all right so we've got here our layers we're using a um, misty moonlight and my a layer is always going to be on these card sketches eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter but you can absolutely do 11 by four and a quarter scored at five and a half so you can do a hot dog or a hamburger card I am pretty fond of the hamburger cards, and I was just talking to my aunt about this earlier. The reason why I like the hamburger cards be is because if I have leftover card bases after my project, they store easier eight and a half by five than they do that long skinny 11 by four and a quarter. So that's the only reason why I why I favor this, this fold, but you can do either way. And then B, we said was three and three quarters by five. And this is also Misty Moonlight. And then we're gonna add a layer to our B. So this is B and a half. This is B, B, B number two. I don't know. <laughs> and this is, is that Flight and Designer Series paper. It's three and three eighths by four and seven eighths, which is really just because you don't wanna waste any of this gorgeous paper. And that's just perfectly what you need pretty much to cut this patchwork. Um, die. So this is the patchwork uh, pieces. Let me show you that. Patchwork pieces dies. It's a set of two dies that cuts your solid designer series paper panel or cardstock panel into these patchwork pieces. So you have this wavy one and this like starburst one that we're using. And this is from the annual catalog. It's something that I think I ordered right away and then I haven't used it yet and I really love it so it's time. This one's 161592 if anybody is like searching for that, can't quite place it. So we're gonna cut that. Um, and then C is one by three. I've got more of that Flight and Airy Designer Series paper for C. And then D is any shape of your choice. So it's depicted as a circle with the sentiment on it in the card sketch but I'm going to use this banner piece. This is basic white cardstock, and I cut it with stylish shapes. It's this short, wide banner. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is die cut this piece and give you some tips on how to lay it out because um, I don't know if you have played with this one at all, but the five and a half by four and a quarter card base when you scale down half an inch you get the three and three quarters by five but this one doesn't scale down you'll notice that it's more narrow and long it looks like you got about a quarter of an inch here but it scales down like three eighths or half an inch here so I'm not sure why Stampin' Up! didn't have these dies scale down from the standard card size, but since they don't, I'm gonna give you a couple of little tips on how to um, put this you know, back together. After we cut this, when we put it back together, I'm gonna give you a couple of tips. So let's go ahead and die cut first. While I'm clearing this away and get in my stamp and cut and emboss machine, we'll look at some comments. Um, let's see here. Kay says, hello, hello Kay. I'm glad you like the card. Jan's card almost looked like my card sketch. I'll have to go look. Is it on the craft social? Oh, goodness. Um, let's see here. Thumbs up and shared. I already thanked you for that, Bonnie, and everybody else who does that. Um, thank you, Kay, for liking and sharing. Um, Josette says, can I subscribe too? Please, please. It would really help the channel. Just click that subscribe button. It's free. I have regular content, at least one live and some um, and at least one, sometimes more, uh, pre-recorded videos every week. We're glad you're here, Josette. All right, let's check out my Facebook. Are we representing on Facebook still? Keep those 
um, comments coming and those oh I see lots of thumbs up too all right so we're going to first things first I don't have Stampin Up's current um, adhesive sheets I have retired ones because I'm the kind of person who buys it puts it in a drawer and then forgets it's there so if you've also done that grab your multi, your um, adhesive sheets uh, and if you haven't but you're looking at this patchwork pieces die set throw a package of the adhesive sheets on your order you will thank yourself later my original sample I cut it knocked them all out of the die struggled to rearrange the puzzle after I struggled to rearrange the puzzle and get all the pieces where they belonged then I had to glue it down with liquid glue um, let me tell you how much easier it is if you put a little bit of adhesive sheet on the back of your designer series paper. So I've got my adhesive sheet. It's the old Dampin' Up one, but I'm gonna use it up anyways. And now I'm gonna run this through and make a self-adhesive puzzle. It is gonna be a puzzle, and the angles drove me bonkers. I don't know about you guys, but I have a hard time um, with angles. I just don't always know how to put it back together. So after we've cut it, you're going to lift it up with all of its pieces and then remove the little frame, the little excess here, and then just put this down right like it is in your work surface, okay? So we're gonna pop that down there. You're gonna love this and you're gonna be able to zip these out really, really fast if you just follow these couple of tips. All right, so now, because, like I showed you before, this doesn't scale, it's a little bit more narrow than, than it is long, we're gonna arrange these so that we've got wider spaces across the top and narrower spaces down the sides. Let me show you my sample so you can see that you'll see across the top border there and across the bottom border we have wide spaces but down the sides they're very narrow do you see the little splits between the patterns and so we are adjusting this a little bit to make it scale for the card um Jan says what stamp set are you using for this card i have um petal park for my flowers and from the online exclusives timeless charm for my sentiment good question um, if you have not seen the online exclusive prod project or products you can check them out marissaalvarez.stampinup.net and click on uh, menus products online exclusives and next month be prepared for a whole bunch of new online exclusive products all right so this is self-adhesive we've got the um film on the back and what I want to show you is that you do not need to have fingernails you don't need to have tools you just flick the edge of this on the pad of your thumb right here until it lifts away and then you can just peel off the liner we're gonna start with the upper left corner we took it out of there and we left everybody else in place no question what goes where because we've got our pieces left in our die now you want a nice um, equal left side and top and that's like our cornerstone oh mine's a little crooked and you'll notice that i didn't burnish it down tight yet the nice part about these adhesive sheets is you can just lay it down you don't have to push it and we can move to our next piece now this one is across the top, so we're going to use a nice wide um, spacing between the pieces. But you'll see again, I didn't move the rest of the die. Nancy says, love your shorts. A little, a little reminder of what you're doing. I'm glad you like them. That's totally Elena. I don't know if she's here um, watching or if she'll catch on the replay or what, but 
Elena does the shorts and I just love them. She's gotten even better too at picking music to go with them. Oh, uh, check them out, you guys, if you haven't seen the shorts, they're cute. All right, so we're gonna just leave a nice wide space between those two. And now I'm going to take these two triangles out and leave everything else. See, no question what pieces I took or where they go, right? The first time there was questions because I just knocked them all out and scrambled them all up and said, good luck, Marissa, trust me, you're gonna like this method better. All right, so now I'm gonna add my next piece down the left side with just a, there's just a crack between the two. And then this other piece and we've created kind of half of the side. We're keeping the border along the left side the same width and just a crack between the pieces. Now let's go back across the top and we can take these two out. And you'll see that I didn't even pull that one very far from where it lives because angles totally baffle me. Does anybody else have trouble with angles? Do angles baffle you? Hey Sonia, thank you for sharing. Oh, Julie says, not sure what's going on with YouTube. It keeps going to an ad and then your video starts over. Ugh. Thanks, YouTube. Um, hopefully, there will be a good replay. Try Facebook. We're on Facebook, too, if you're having trouble, YouTube. Uh, let's see here. Let's see how YouTube comments are going. Anybody else having trouble there on YouTube? If you're having trouble on YouTube, we're broadcasting live on Facebook too. All right, so we're gonna try to keep this spacing between our top panels, but I don't wanna burnish it down yet. Let me flip this little guy. And I do just flick on your thumb until it lifts. Don't dig, don't scratch. Once you got it, then you just, see, it lifts away. I don't know if you guys can see how it lifts away, but it really is. If you're just patient and kinda flick, then you can pull them apart. All right, so there's our last corner. We've got an even top and right border. We've got nice wide spacing. And that is the first half of our patchwork. Then what I like to do is work, keep working from the top. So I'll turn this and then I'll work from the top instead of working from around to the bottom. So I'll take my next corner, remove the liner and pop that in with equal right and top, and just kind of a split between the pieces down the side. All right, and without ex having to explain it, you guys are gonna really find that this is the fastest, easiest way. Peel and stick, keep them in order, and when you're done, it looks like this. All right, <laughs> what do you think? Do you guys like this um, patchwork look? I bought this because I was so enthusiastic about it, and this is the first time I've used it. I'm really loving it. All right, here's our card in case you're just joining us. <laughs> and let's see here. Rhonda says, why don't they just make it dye that would work without all the fuss? Um, well, it works, but if you scramble them up, you kind of caused the fuss. So I've, I'm really loving just keeping it in the dye and then peel and stick. Um, I really did cause a fuss the first time. <laughs> when I just knocked all the pieces out and some of them were some of them were face up and some of them were face down and the angles just totally threw me for a loop nobody nobody said anything anybody say anything about angles do you guys have trouble with angles angles just baffle me so to keep them all just right in the die and put them back in order the, the way they came out stick them back down makes me very happy Oh, what did Teresa say? Teresa says, no troubles here. I do have my YouTube up on the big screen. Whew, I'm on the big screen. All right, we made this beautiful patchwork background. 
So now I'm going to put it on with dimensionals. I'm gonna let that kind of be the star. I am gonna do double dimensionals because I'm gonna put the banner on with the dimensionals too. And I usually don't double up dimensionals because here in the US, after you go a quarter of an inch, then you have to go up to like flat rate or package it, or the rate for flats if you're lucky and that's about two dollars if somebody wants to be really um, picky at the post office they might tell you to put it ground advantage after a quarter of an inch so double dimensionals are usually something i avoid but this panel is just so beautiful we're gonna we're gonna dimensional it now i showed you guys before that i'm doing more of this card sketch because <laughs> instead of being high of center we're gonna add our c layer low of center got my one by three flight and airy and i'm going to just glue that one onto the front right now then we're going to do some stamping i love the um petal park stamp set and the petal park i think it's called builder punch it might be petal park punch is really an awesome wingman you can use just the punch with designer series paper or vellum or cardstock and get some awesome embellishments, floral embellishments. But with the stamp, you really get great detail. So we're going to do our um, stamp of yours mat because it's photopolymer. And we're going to stamp Night of Navy and Daffodil Delight for our ink pads. All right, there we go. I'm going to stamp my flowers first on Daffodil Delight with Daffodil Delight. And we're not punching these out, we're just gonna cut the centers so it doesn't have to be perfect and you don't have to worry about placement for the punch. You're just getting the imprint for the centers. And then we're gonna wipe that off and we're going to change to Misty Moonlight ink. And we're going to stamp on Misty Moonlight Flight and Airy paper. Where is my Flight and Airy piece? Here it is. But this one we are gonna punch. So we want to look at our punch before we stamp and make sure that it's going to be easy to put in the punch and get those flowers cut out. And you can see the orientation. You want the little flower up. All right, that'll be nice and easy to punch now because we took a minute to consider that before we just stamped the paper. Let's do our greeting while we've got the ink pad open. I hope you guys will try shortcut card sketch number 12. I can't believe we're at the end of this series. If you missed 11 or 10, we'll have those linked together um, on the blog post. And I think since this is the final one in the series, we'll link back to shortcut card sketch number one and do the whole 12 series in case you want to um i don't know go back and revisit uh, thanks for all you do is from timeless charm we grabbed our greeting out of another stamp set it fits perfect on that uh stylish shapes banner let's pop out our flowers and we're going to fussy cut the centers i love the Misty Moonlight and Daffodil Delight contrast. The combination, so pretty. All right, let's just grab a pair of paper snips and we're going to just go around the center, kind of bubble cut it. It's not going to be perfect. The more you kind of wobble, because it's just like a, a stippled pattern, I think the more natural it looks. So pretty simple, cut out your centers. And then the easiest way I think to apply these is to take your take your pick tool. You're gonna take it apart. So you've got the pick end. Your cap is on the spatula end. So you have one tool here. And then you'll take the putty, cap off the putty end. And now you've got two tools. So you're gonna do this two handed. We're gonna drop a bit of glue at the center of the flower. Just a tiny dot will do. Gonna pick up the 
flower center with the putty end of the Take Your Pick tool. Then you'll place the center, hold it with the pick, remove the putty, and remove the pick. Now it's there ready for you. All right, now we're gonna put this back together. We're gonna add the cap back to our tool, and then we're gonna press the center of these flowers which is going to give them a lovely cup shape. And then we'll put the flowers on a mini glue dot and make them pick and stick. Now let's go ahead and bring our last couple of pieces in here. No, I think this is my last piece. This greenery is cut using one of my favorite die sets. Now this is the um, gorgeously made dies. Let me show you. Here's the one that we used. It has a gorgeously made stamp set. You can get it if you want to, but if you don't love the stamp set, don't get bundled, but don't miss the dies either. So we've got this gorgeous vine branch sprig that we're using today. There's another sprig shape, a torn edge die, a strip with torn edges so it looks like tape, and then the notebook edge. So this die set definitely stands on its own and um, if you love the gorgeously made stamp set, then grab the bundle and save 10% on both. But if you don't love it, don't get bundled and don't miss the dies. All right, they're really cool. Um, Bonnie says, great tip to stamp on the designer series paper. Didn't it just give so much depth to the flowers? I'm glad you like that. And then the contrast with that little bit of cardstock in the center, they, they're just so pretty. It's a pretty color combination. I'm so glad you like it. All right, so the I am doing liquid glue on this. You can use that multi-purpose sheet, that, that adhesive sheet if you want to, but I like that the ends of this one are not attached, that you've got that kind of texture. The flowers have been shaped with the take your pick tool on the stamp and pierce mat. The wings are up on your dragonflies and the ends of this are just a little bit loose. So you can see I just dragged the glue. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Do you see? That's how much glue I'm using. I'm not kidding, you don't need a lot. A little tiny bit goes a very long way and it's gonna be sandwiched between the flowers and the dragonfly and the banner and everything else. So you can just use the very littlest bit. And that is always the secret with liquid glue. Um, the preschool teachers used to say dot, 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 don't need a lot when my son was in preschool and I was like, oh, that's brilliant. It really is just perfect. And um, what what does your grandma say, Rhonda? Um, a little glue sticks better than a lot of glue. I think that's, that's another very wise words. Kay loves the card. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you like it. All right, we're gonna do dimensional. I'm taking the edge see the think side the t of the think side the front left we want to avoid dimensionals back there so i'm going to put my finger right where i don't want any dimensionals that way i can't mix it up while i'm turning it over put the dimensionals to the right side because we're going to tuck under the largest flower and that double bow all right so now we've got room to do that and we didn't <laughs> get confused as we were flipping it over because like angles when you start flipping things over I get a little confused so just put your finger where you don't want the adhesive and add the adhesive everywhere else mm. maybe I have more problems than your average bear but maybe that helps somebody because they do the same thing all right thanks now we're gonna add our little flower see how it'll tuck right underneath there now nice and easy keep those petals up and then our medium size one we're gonna make a little triangle placement here and then the smallest one all the way at the end leave room for your dingles and your dragonflies let's do the dragonflies next 
I've got this dotted vellum. It's part of a vellum uh, assortment. There's three patterns in it. It's in the annual catalog. So um, you can use a plain one if you want to, or you could grab something like um, some of that, remember the brushed brass um, card stocks that we had, the brushed metallics? Those would be beautiful. These are kind of like the brushed brass dragonflies and swallows that we have right now in the online exclusives, but they never run out and they can be whatever material you want them to be. So this punch is really good for adding that little extra something to your card. You use the scraps of your specialty paper. You spent so much money on those specialty papers, those um, glitter papers and stuff. They're two bucks a sheet or more. And so out of the littlest scraps, you can make some big impact on your specialties. Vellum too, vellum is so expensive. All right, so we're rolling up the glue dot and then we're gonna put it on the body of the dragonfly. Then we're going to put our dragonfly where we want. Pull the tool out and pick up the wings. Give them a little dimension there. And then we'll put one on the edge of our banner the same way. What do you guys think? Do you guys have this dragonfly punch? It's been around for a while. I had it from the day that it had a um, designer series paper and a bundle and everything that went with it. I, I think there's designer series paper. I have to have this from the very beginning, but I don't use it enough. It makes the cutest embellishments. If you don't have it and you still got some celebration wish list, but you don't know what products you want, check out the more to celebrate. If you're just joining us, Stampin' Up! just ordered or added uh, 10 new ce celebration choices. This dragonfly punch is one of them. So there's two stamp sets, two packs of designer series paper, two kits, um, the embossing folder, splatters and stripes, that combo pack, um, sweet thoughts, memories, and more cards and envelopes, the dragonfly punches with a $100 purchase, and then um, the core color stamp and write markers. So lots of great products to choose from now to wrap up cele celebration strong. All right, time to embellish. If you got the um, sampler, you have a full pack of these uh, iridescent foil gems and you have a full pack of the uh, Baker's Twine three color combo pack. These are both from the spring catalog. And if you've seen the series, we've used Lemon Molly and Balmy Blue. So today we're gonna use Flirty Flamingo, but I think any other three would look lovely with this. And once you get started making those patchwork, <laughs> those patchwork uh, backgrounds, you can just keep going and going and do all the different color twines with your patchwork backgrounds. All right, so I'm gonna fold my um, Baker's twine and I just left it right on the spool. I probably have 20 inches, maybe 22. I tend to be a little extra generous with my um, double bows because I get a little all thumbs, but that's okay. We're going to go like this. <laughs> all right, so from the end that's at the spool, you'll loop and then you'll swoop over the top from the back, tuck that little space that your finger is holding and pull, hold the center of the knot, hold the center at the knot and then pull your loops to tighten. And there's our cute little double bow. We're going to, I'm getting better at these because I've been doing them a lot. <laughs> so, you know, the old adage, practice makes perfect. It really does help. All right, let's cut off the loop at that end. And we're gonna do like we did for the dragonfly. We'll roll up the glue dot. And on the end of your take your pick tool, and then we'll put the glue dot on the knot. Got our bow, got, it's got a nice handle now, so it's gonna be really easy. We'll just lift up the banner, and not the greeting, though we just want the banner, and tuck the bow right under the corner. And give it a little finesse. 
so pretty i love that pop of flirty flamingo it just really lightens and brightens everything up all right you guys how do you like the card <laughs> nancy says you're always a little extra i know i can't help it when it's when it's almost done i just add a little extra <laughs> And I also like to say um, a little extra in my measurements because for dexterity issues, you're always better with a little bit extra than to cut a piece too short because then what do you do with a sh too short piece? You just make scraps, right? All right, so we're gonna go two here and three kinda up from the banner. I'm really, um, I don't know, they're, they're so pretty but they're subtle, these little dots so I'm going with extra to make up for the subtlety that we have here and there's all of our sparkle that's it you guys we finished our shortcut card sketch series for this year or I mean for this catalog and if you've got any questions about anything please reach out marissa at kitchen table stamper.com is my email um if you'd like to shop stampin up marissa alvarez.stampinup.net don't forget to check out the new celebration items. Let's see. Do I have a thing for that? There we go. Haha. Ah, -ha. oh, still an old host code. Who's in charge here? Don't use that host code. You don't want to use that host code. But Marissa Alvarez at stampin up, stampin up net. And don't forget to check out the um, online exclusive for like the Timeless Charm. There's also a stamp set bundle there. If you've thought about joining Stampin' Up, there's a online exclusive pre-order. I'm sure you can add those pre-orders to your kit. If you've got questions about that, reach out. What do you guys think of the last sketch? It's super simple, but you really can do something very striking, even with such a simple card sketch. I can't wait to see what you guys do with it. After we're done here, I'll go add it to the craft social so that you guys can see. That's facebook.com slash group slash kitchen table stamper craft social. We'll post on the blog later today with the PDF version of this. You can download it if you like and clean video and project sheet for our card today. <laughs> Jan says your sketches are awesome. Oh, and beautiful card. Thank you, Jan. I'm glad you like it. And Nancy says, love the twist, right? I was just looking at this card sketch and I was like, hey, we could do something super simple. Maybe we'll do that for, um, maybe I'll have to do, ooh, on the tic-tac-toe. You guys, did you guys see that we're playing tic-tac-toe on the craft social? All right, stick around with me for a minute if you don't mind, or if you've got a minute, because I'll show you. Um, every week, on Thursday, we have a challenge. If you don't know the craft social, um, check it out. And uh, I'll tell you right now, we've got Thursday challenge. Some Thursdays, it's a live challenge. Some Thursdays, it's a game. Well, last week was supposed to be live, but let me do this. Um, or this Thursday should have been live, but I just had so much so much going on and so what we did was we jumped in with a um, tic-tac-toe so this is a craft social facebook.com slash group slash kitchen table stamper craft social you can navigate there from the business page and you'll find any announcements in this featured section or challenges and so this week we have tic-tac-toe and one of the squares is shortcut card sketch so maybe i need to see if i could do a simple one with the shortcut card sketch and play tic-tac-toe <laughs> with you guys so if you do this card sketch and you want to share let me show you that too if you go back to kitchen table stamper craft social in the pinned um, or the featured section again, it's this little featured section. We already have our um, shortcut card sketch number 11 <coughs> and shortcut card sketch number 10 here. We'll post 12, but if you want to, you can share your cards 
made with the sketches right here on our post. So just add in on the comments. Um, let's see more comments. And you can see what everybody else is doing with the sketch. You guys can see Tony and Rebecca, Teresa. Thank you guys for sharing. Look at how Marla turned it sideways. I love that. See? Yep. Yep. You and me, Marla. I say crafty girls do what they want. So you can share your card sketches here and you'll find that through the pinned section. But come on and join us. And if you do this card sketch and if you combine it with your um, tic-tac-toe, we want to see it. All right. <laughs> Okay, you guys, <laughs> I hope that you all have a really awesome weekend. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you in the craft social. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. And I will be back, same bat time, same bat channels, next Friday at noon. All right, guys, have a great weekend. I'll see you next time. Enjoy the sketches. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week.